Good morning, Harsha. Good morning. Today our topic is declarative rules. Okay. So, shall we start? Yeah, we can. First question. What is forward and backward chaining? Yeah. Uh, forward and backward chaining is a mechanism of exhibition. Let me tell you with an example of uh, taking declare expression. In declare expression, we have an option called change tracking. Uh, like uh, in the change tracking, we, we have a drop down called whenever input properties changes and whenever used, whenever used if property is missing, whenever used if property has no value, like these options are available. Suppose when we select the option of whenever input properties changes, that means declare expression depends on the source properties. Let's take an example of A is equal to B plus C. Here A is target property, B and C are uh, source properties. So as we have the option of whenever input properties changes, Anywhere throughout the application, if the value of either B or C changing, then automatically declare expression will get called and expression gets executed. A will be computed. This is forward chaining execution, which depends on source properties. And now in the change tracking tab under used as uh, under uh, the drop down, if we choose the option whenever used or whenever used, if property is missing, whenever used, if property has no value on clipboard, then that means here target property. It depends on target property. Whenever a target property is used, Whenever target property has no value on clipboard or whenever target property is missing from the clipboard, then declare expression will get executed and the computation of B plus C will be calculated and it will get assigned to A. And this way of execution based on target property is referred as backward chaining. Okay. In PEGA A, I have seen there is no change tracking tab. So how we can call uh, backward chaining or forward chaining? Yeah. Uh, in PEGA A, change tracking tab is uh, not available. but if we go to action drop down in the rule form of declare expression, we see an option called use legacy expression. If we select the option use legacy expression, then change tracking tab will be visible. And there we have options of forward and backward chaining that we can choose. Okay. Let me ask you one scenario. We have a declare expression A equal to B plus C and I am cre I'm creating an activity with property set method in that uh, uh, A equal to B plus C. When I try to save that activity, I am getting th error message. What is the error message and why you are getting the error message? Okay. So, if we are creating a declare expression A is equal to B plus C and the same if we are writing in an activity, like I am creating an activity property set where A is equal to B plus C, then process command is going to throw compilation error saying that target property A is already used in another expression. So, we cannot use it here. Which means that if you are using any target property in declare expression that can never be set anywhere else in any other rule in PRBC. The target property of declare expression can never be used further in any rule. That's why PRBC will throw compilation error message. Okay. One more scenario. We have a property D. Business never wants this property as a target property in any declarative rule. How we can achieve this or how we can re restrict this? So, if we want to restrict any property not to be used in the uh, any of the declared rules as a target property, then there is an option available. Like when we open the property and go to advanced tab and scroll down, there we have an option called uh, cannot be a declarative target. If we select the checkbox in the advanced tab of the property, this property cannot be used as a target property either in expression or anywhere else. That's how we can prevent it. Okay. Explain about declare index and how it works in the background. Okay. So, a declare index rule is mainly meant for uh, doing the indexing part. L suppose whenever we have embedded properties like let us say page list property if we take, when page list property so stores into work table as a blob, this cannot be retrieved into report definitions uh, because it is there in the blob and list format. So, now in order to export this into the report definition rules into a report, we need to index it. That means the data of page list, we have to expose it into a different table called index table. So, whenever we are going to use, uh, whenever we are going to optimize page-rich properties, indexing will be done by PRPC and as part of indexing, an index table, index class, index properties, all that will be created along with that a declare index rule also gets created. If you go to the definition of the declare index rule, there is something called source page context and below that index class to write, which means that whenever the page list that we are, uh, we have done uh, optimization. When this page rich property is been saving or updating or deleting into the or getting removed from the uh, blob table, uh, blob column of the work table, the same action will also be performed by the process commander on the index table. If we store a page rich property in work table, then immediately the same data will reflect into index table as well. 
so for this automatic execution of whenever this page list is impacted in work table index rule help, helps because that is a declarative rule so for every action that is being done on this page list for insert or update or delete in a respect to work table uh, through the respect to object processing and all then process commander fires the declare index rule which will perform the same action on the index table as well okay can you explain declare trigger with one scenario okay so a trigger rule we can use whenever we wanted to execute activities automatically whenever an instance is getting saved or updated or deleted committed save or committed delete into the respect to trigger table i mean like any table by using obj methods so the scenario is nothing but like uh, uh, let's say for example if a customer record is stored into customer table i mean like a new customer is being registered with our bank then we wanted to fire automatically an email to the customer in that case we can create a trigger so the moment a customer record is inserted into customer table immediately trigger will fire and trigger activity gets executed in trigger activity we can have send email notification being called that's how it is uh, going to work and it is not only for insert when update happens or committed save or committed delete like this also we can have uh, the trigger rule getting fired okay what is declare constraint and explain with one scenario okay a declare constraint rule can be used in order to uh, do perform the validation the two dependency validation which means that whenever we are going to create any prop uh, whenever we wanted to validate any property uh, let me explain with one example let's say for example if we want to validate age property based on gender that means uh, if gender is equal to male then age, age requires that age should be greater than or equal to 21 so here age should be greater than or equal to 21 not always when gender is equal to male so if i enter a value of age 17 it will get validated successfully if we choose the gender as female which means that the validation of age is now dependent on gender so this is how to implement the dependency validation we can use declare constraint rule okay can you explain declare on change with one scenario yeah declare on change rule is going to get fired whenever there is a change in the property value so when we create declare on change rule in the declare on change rule we have an option we have we have so properties to watch there we can add one or more properties whenever these property values are getting changed anywhere throughout the application automatically on change rule will get fired when on change rule gets fired inside on change rule we can call act activity is going to get executed automatically so we can use this declare on change rule in order to monitor the change changes in order to track the changes of any property value and store the uh, tracking changes like that we can use declare on change rule thank you for watching this video please subscribe to hasha trainings channel if you have any queries or questions please write it in comment box we'll try to resolve it in next video thank you